Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the literature of the Harlem Renaissance, and we're fortunate to have with us Alana McLaughlin, who has been with us on a number of occasions to talk about uh, the literature as well as some other aspects of the uh, Harlem Renaissance. And of course, Alana, let me uh, welcome you to the show this morning, and let me again tell you how delighted we are to uh, have you here, and uh, at the same time to remind our audience that you've been <coughs> with us on a number of occasions. And so why don't you uh, say something about your background, your education, and some of the things that are important in terms of your life that, w that uh, eventually brought you to us this morning, as well as to uh, sort of give us an overview of the topic of the uh, Harlem Renaissance. And I think that by that time, <coughs> we should have uh, completed this first part. Let's start off with that. Well, my name is Alon McLaughlin. As you said in the beginning of the show, I was born August 27, 2002, which would make me 10. Um, also, I am very involved in the church, uh, as, as you are. You're the reverend, and I'm sort of the, uh, I'm sort of the only acolyte that ever acolytes every Sunday. <laughs> every Sunday. I mean, even if I don't want to do it, I, I still got to do it. I mean, because that's just, ha that's just, that's just what I do in church. And now let's get on to the subject for today. The Harlem Renaissance. When, if you go up to a random person and say the Harlem Renaissance, they will think about um, jazzy music, uh, piano, and all these little doobity bop kind of <laughs> things. But um, it was much more than that. Now, the Harlem Renaissance was actually, before people started calling it the Harlem Renaissance, it was called the New Negro Movement. Um, and it was inspired by Alan Locke, Alan Leroy Locke. And now, this uh, movement st spanned from 1919 to about the mid-1930s, about mm, 1934, uh, when the Great Depression started dur uh, and the stock market crashed. Mm -hmm. but, and so during this time, African-American writers blossomed. Mm -hmm. And I mean, French-speaking African-Americans from everywhere kind of bonded together. And that's how they basically had their break. That's like the Harlem Renaissance is one of the basic reasons why we have such good writers today. Like because most modern African-American writers were inspired by the the new Negro movement, or the Hall of Renaissance. Like, writers such as Zornia Hurston, she wrote, um, she wrote many books, and today we read, like, they're also watching God, we watch the movies, and all the Jonah's water gourd, like, we, we see all these, and you, th and you have to think about the Harlem Renaissance, because this is where all these African-Americans bonded together to basically start the new Negro movement. And then there, and then there wasn't all, there wasn't always literature. There was music, like musicians like Louis Armstrong, like the trumpet. Like I don't think most people know this, but the piano was a sign of wealth. Like if you, and then my, and today you just see you can see anybody playing a piano. Like they have computer um, pianos in my band class. And, and then most of these children don't know like that was a sign of wealth. Like that wasn't available to just anybody back then. I mean. They just think that they, they can have, uh, they can play piano because it is, but it was really like a privilege back then, and it still is. And so those are some of the things that kind of made the Harlem Renaissance. Now, Lana, within the context of uh, all of this information that you've given us uh, so far, what would you consider to be the uh, most significant aspect of the Renaissance? Can you see it within the uh, whole total of uh, the history that we've often talked about on this uh, 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 show. For example, we know that uh, during the Harlem Renaissance, uh, Africans were uh, called colored, and then they came, then up, they with came up with <coughs> a new name, Negro, Negro. New Negro, Negro. And, and all of those aspects of it. And so while we appreciate all of that information that you've given us, and we anticipate some additional information within that range, when we come back, let's talk about uh, some of the reasons that Africans changed from being colored during the uh, Harlem Renaissance to uh, the so-called New Negro. I think you've given us some indication of this New Negro movement, but for the most part, I think, and, I, and we appreciate that uh, information that you've given us. I think you've demonstrated uh, the, <coughs> the kind of ability to continue carrying this information uh, forward. And uh, I think one of the things that we would uh, certainly like to uh, hear you say something about uh, Harlem in the sense that uh, everybody believed that had you not visited Harlem, 
then you've never really been to New York and et cetera. And, mm -hmm. and those kinds of ideas and things that you've talked about with us on a number of occasions and, and I'm sure that you're very, very uh, in tune with it, you see. And so I think that you're giving us some excellent information and I, I, we look forward to the second part as well as the final part of this show. And let me encourage our audience to, uh, that we'll be back following this very, very short commercial break. <laughs> 